Hi everyone, welcome to the channel, Advice to Think Twice. Um, this is Monica and I am doing a cat review, a cat review, a deck review <laughs> of the cat tarot uh, published by Los Caro Bell. If you've been following me for a while, you know that I have several Los Caro Bell decks. So this one is made by C.A. Eskenazi and artwork is by D. Camerano. Okay. Okay. It's gorgeous. It's just gorgeous. Let me start there. Um, I'm not usually drawn to um, decks that have like animals in them or um, even just plants or something, but specifically with animals because they're so cute I, and I feel like I can't take that seriously or, or I felt like I couldn't take that seriously and I couldn't do like a serious reading with a deck that has cats on it, for example. Um, however, um, the decks that um, I got, I got them as a gift from my partner George for my upcoming birthday, and I have like seven decks. Seven? One, two, one, two, three, four, five, six. Yes, yeah, seven tarot decks and two oracle decks. But let me tell you, these are, they're beautiful, and they're so well made, and I'll take you through them. I'll do walkthroughs and reviews of all of them, because I really feel like they're worth taking the time to sit down and talk about them. Um... And we're starting with the cat tarot. Okay, so that's the box. These are the cards. It comes with this little booklet, as most, I think all those Garbeau decks do. That's in several languages. It's usually four or five. One, two, three, five languages. And you have a little bit, um, a few words about the author, Caroline Eskenazi. Um, and she, for this deck, for example, she says she's always been fond of heroes, so you're going to see all sorts of characters in the cards, on top of them being cats, right? And then they just take you through the major arcana, and then the suits of the minor arcana, and then that's, that's the, literally the English portion, okay? So it's not... I wouldn't start with this deck. If you're just starting out with tarot, I would not start with this deck. Why? It's gorgeous, but you need to have some background. You need to have some previous knowledge um, because this little booklet, you know, it doesn't give you everything. If you got this deck and you got um, like a proper, like a bigger in-depth tarot book, maybe, um, because you do still have the symbols of the cards and the meanings of the cards very, very well illustrated. And that's something that I really like. These are the cards. That's the back of the cards. So you can see the back, you can flip it up and down. So it's very, um, reversal reading friendly, right? Because you're not going to know if a card is flipped upside down or if it's upright when you're laying it down, face down. Um, so that's um, good. The card is very good. Card stock, bendy enough, but not too bendy. Um, glossy. It shuffles really well. Um, what else do you need to know? In terms of you know the technical, <laughs> the the material, the technical side. Um, I'm, I think that's it. Let's just go through the cards. What I want to do, because I've seen reviews, well, not reviews, they weren't reviews, I've seen walkthroughs um, of the deck. Um, but I actually spent some time yesterday researching it, like online, like literally figuring out why a character is in a particular call, a card. I wanted to understand why the author chose that hero to represent that card. So I did I did some research. Some, some of the characters um, are easy to spot, easy to recognize, but then some of them not so much. You need to have some sort of background knowledge or you do your research and you figure it out. Um, but that was just for me because you can very easily read these cards. You don't have to have the background story about the particular author, um, the particular hero illustrated in the card. You don't have to have that story. That just adds to the meanings and the representations and the symbols that are already there that are typical to every tarot card. Okay, that being said, let's start. So I'm going to go through the cards. I will also talk about the character in that card. Just a little bit, just a couple words. Um, 
because like I say, I wasn't able to find anyone who did that. I wasn't able to find a video like that. And I really, I was really searching for a couple of characters because I was like, I don't know who this is. All right, so for example, in the Major Arcana, first card of the Major Arcana, we have the Fool. And in this card, the, the hero of the card, you can see it's based on Jack and the Beanstalk, right? And it's actually called Cat and the Beanstalk. It's so cute. The card has this beautiful black border and it makes the colors pop. Uh, I really feel like it brings the card to life. And if we were to tie this with the, the meaning of the full card, the traditional meaning of the full card, right? It's just going off on a dream, it's taking a chance, it's going somewhere completely unknown, putting yourself in a brand new situation uh, and just hoping for the best, right? Which, I mean, he, he didn't know where he was going when he was climbing that beanstalk. So just, an example. Then we have in the magician. Um, I believe this is Citizen Kane. It's called Citizen Cat. So there's the history around that that can add to the meaning of the card. The high priestess is. I always forget. The high priestess is Angelic Cat, <laughs> Marquise of the Cat. I need to do more digging on this one, if I'm honest. I remember seeing this painting. I just, it doesn't come to me right now, so we'll just move on. The Empress. The Empress is actually Elizabeth Taylor. And I'm sure we'll, we've all seen the picture. Just trying to get it to focus. The Emperor. The Emperor is Louis the Fourteenth, who was, I think, um, he's known for the longest, um, longest time that he ruled, um, and he was very good at, you know, strategizing. Obviously, he was in power for a really long time, so he was very good at strategizing, very good at doing what needed to, to be done, looking after his people, you know. That's how I saw the connection. The hermit, the hermit, the hierophant, sorry. The hierophant is Merlin. We all know who Merlin is. I mean, I know who Merlin is before I know who <laughs> Louis the Fourteenth is, if I'm completely honest. Um, but, yeah, Merlin is like, he's, he's the wizard. He holds all the keys. He's got the knowledge. He's got the wisdom. He can take on disciples. I think he did. So it's that kind of energy, right? And he had certain responsibilities. So again, it ties in into the meaning of the Hierophant. The lovers. And the lovers, we see Don Juan. Quintessential lover. So we know what that's about. Um, the chariot. The chariot is really cool. This is Genghis Khan. Or it's based on Genghis Khan. It's Genghis Cat. Um... And you can definitely see the military aspects of the chariot um, card. You can see the uh, win through willpower aspect, the bravery, the focus, the keeping it together, putting emotion aside, doing what needs to be done, the perspective, you know, because we have a goal in mind and we're going for it no matter what. So you can definitely see why she chose Genghis Khan for the character to represent in this card. This is so good. In the strength card, we have um, Ripley. Is it Ripley? I call her Ripley. Yeah, <laughs> Catelyn Ripley, which obviously is the main character of Ripley. And you can see she's holding the cat. Oh my god, when I watched this movie, or well the movies, I spent all my time thinking, please don't hurt that cat, please don't hurt that cat. <laughs> I can't handle it, I can't take it. But obviously with the strength card, you know, you've got some demons to fight, you have to control your emotions, you have to hold back, know when to hold back, know when to take action. And it's not like physical strength, right? Because it's not like she's going to tackle that thing. She just needs to be strategic. Inner strength. Not lose her cool, right? These are really good, guys. These are really good. I'm so, I'm really impressed. I really am. In the Hermit, we have Captain Nemo, you know, and it's, it's about, you know, stepping away from the world, going deeper into things, 
looking for deeper meanings, looking for a new world, learning, looking to learn more about something, right? Just tying in the meanings with the, um, the Hermit card energy. In the Wheel of Fortune, we have Charlie Chaplin. And she chose Charlie Chaplin to um, represent the Wheel of Fortune because she, the way she described it was tears can be laughter and, and then easily turn to uh, tears of sadness and vice versa. You know, so it just represents that cycle and you don't know what you're going to get. Um, so I thought that was very interesting. And it's important to go with it, to go with the flow and to um, work with what is given to you, right? Because with the Wheel of Fortune, you don't really get a say in what happens. You just kind of have to figure out a way to, to deal with it. Justice, we have Robin Hood. You all know who Robin Hood is. I know that much. Um, you know, taking from the rich to give to the poor, to restore the balance, to make sure everyone has what is fair for them to have, right? thought that was really cool. Really cool. Um, the Hangman. Now in The Hangman, we have... <clears throat> I read about this. Cyrano de Bergerac. Obviously, it's called Cyrano de Bergerac. Um, and I had to research why she chose this for the hangman <coughs> and you probably already know this but I, I didn't I had to research I'll be honest and um, the short version is the short story is right um, he fell in love with this girl and he kept waiting to tell her he kept waiting to tell her and he held back and he held back um, in the end when he did told, uh, tell her she told him that you know she loved someone else etc but is that energy of waiting, waiting, and holding back that we see similar to the energy of the hangman? Because obviously you can see that she's actually with someone else, but he's like in his own world and imagining and thinking about how he's going to say it, and he doesn't even notice. <coughs> the death card. I found this very interesting because in the death card we have Count Dracula. And I thought, well, it's not literal death, because this is kind of, you know, graphic, um, but when you think about it, well, if a vampire bites you, you don't die, you turn into a vampire, right? Well, it just depends on his intentions, if we want to go deeper into it, but whatever. Um, bottom line is, the death card is complete transformation. The old is dead, you cannot go back to it, you have this new situation and these new circumstances and you just kind of have to get on with it and start from scratch and learn about your new world and your new situation which if you were to turn into a vampire well we don't know what that's like right we can go back to being human because the transformation is permanent um and we just kind of have to learn how to live as a vampire it's completely different than being human you have to do things you never thought you would etc you have to, you know, have different things to look out for, th different things you're vulnerable to, etc. So if you really think about it, this is actually a very good representation of the energy of the death card. I'm telling you guys, I'm really, really impressed. This is not just a cute deck. The uh, temperance energy is Snow White. This is cute. <laughs> So we all know so Snow White, you know, waiting, taking your time, figuring things out, having to adapt to new situations, and very briefly. The devil and the devil energy, we have Jack the Ripper. And with Jack the Ripper, obviously you have the seduction side of it, because he would go after uh, ladies of the night. So there's that energy, there's that aspect to it. You have the cruelty aspect, the overpowering, the control, and the ultimately very unhealthy energy, right, um, of the energy of, of, of the, de the devil. But it's just 
God, it, guys, it's so good. It's so good. I can't even tell you. In the tower, we have Alice in Wonderland. Okay, now let's go down the rabbit hole. And again, it's something where once you're down the rabbit hole, you can't come out the same as you were. Something shifts deeply and profoundly. Right? It's, it's awesome, guys. It's just awesome. The star, I forget. Brigitte Bardot. <laughs> and this is obviously all about um, beauty, being free, being who you are, you know, dancing. It's obviously, you know, the admiration from up close and from afar, following a dream, standing out, being one of a kind. So we see that in the energy of um, the star. The moon, look at the moon, guys. It's Marilyn Monroe. And, I mean, we can interpret this a number of different ways. Because it's all about beauty, and it's all about romance, and seduction. But at the same time, things aren't what they seem. And they weren't with Marilyn, were they? She was actually, you know, very sad, very... Um, depressed at times because people kept using her for the wrong reasons and putting her in situations and making her out to be something that she really wasn't, right? So I really, I really found it interesting that she chose Marilyn Monroe for the moon card. In the sun we have beauty and it's paired with judgment as the beast. So we have beauty and the beast as a couple, right? But in the sun, we have beauty. This is all about, you know, obviously beauty and attraction and um, following your own path, seeing things that other people don't see potentially, you know, light being shown on things with the sun energy because the sun illuminates. And ultimately, you know, carefree energy, dance, freedom, be who you are, getting what you want type energy. The beast in judgment. So with the beast, the reason she chose the beast, right, is um, focusing on the awakening side of things. So he's been, I think he was cursed. Guys, I don't know my Disney. I'm not a Disney kid. I, I'm sorry. I'm just not. I was, I, I never got the whole princess thing. I would watch the Adams Family and Scooby Doo when I was a kid. I don't, I don't know what to tell you. Okay, so I'm just trying. I'm trying. Okay, I'm trying. Um, but with the beast, right? I think he was cursed, and he turned into this ba beast. Was it? I think he was cursed, and then True Love's Kiss or something could turn him back or something. I don't know. Um, <laughs> guys, I'm sorry. I don't know my Disney. Um, but she's focusing on the aspect of, the author is focusing on the aspect of, so he was cursed, he's this beast, and he's been like this for ages and ages, right? And he's kind of given up to this, right? It is what it is, whatever. And here comes this beautiful girl and awakens things in him because he sees him, she sees him differently, right? So there's that different perspective and it's almost like he's given another chance he's given a second chance at, at love and life and and being and feeling alive and having love in his life right so she's focusing on the awakening aspect because you know you have the trumpets in the background and that empty coffin there so coming out of stagnation coming out of you know a very very difficult time and even you know you also have the aspect of the a sentence that is final or that feels final right which also all comes together in the judgment card energy so i found i found that interesting okay in the world card we have leonardo da vinci and actually on the back you can also kind of see his work right so i mean <laughs> it's, it's the world energy it's creation creation brought to life as it were everyone knows your name everyone knows who you are it's fame popularity it's reaching your goal successfully okay that's the the major 
arcana guys it's awesome I'm, I'm, it's awesome i'm telling you this is going to be a little bit of i mean a longer video than a simple walkthrough but again i found it i really wanted to talk about the author's choices of these heroes to represent these cards because it's very thought as very well thought out it really is i really appreciate that okay then we get into the minor arcana we start with wands Ace of Wands, I think this is um, Artemis. Is it Artemis or Athena? I think it's uh, Athena. No, it's, I think it's Athena. Yeah, Athena. So, you know, taking charge, taking action. You also have the element of attraction there. Going for something. In the Two of Wands, we have Elvis Presley. And the message that she puts with that is put a little rock and roll in your life, swap your hips, sw swap, sway your hips on the music, but never become the puppet of um, anyone. So with the two of wands, put a little rock and roll, make some different choices. And you can see he's, he still has the world in his hand as you would normally see with the two of wands. It's, I'm telling you guys, it's so great. It's so great. So this is about making different choices, taking a chance, taking a risk, trying something different, trying something new, keeping it light and fun. In the Three of Wands, I mean, Wands I think are, well, in the Three of Wands we have um, Rhett Butler, obviously it's Rhett Cattler, um, from Gone with the Wind, isn't he? So this is... I mean, look at it, it's very imposing, it's almost like he's looking out to wait for, to see what's going to happen, there's again an element of attraction, knowing what you want, going for it, expecting to see results, it's not a matter of, you know, maybe, I don't know, it's very confident energy. In the Four of Wands, we have Mickey Mouse. So again, I don't know that much about Mickey Mouse. I mean, I know who Mickey Mouse is, right? I mean, whatever. But um, with the Four of Wands, I think she's focusing on the aspect of things just being happy, harmonious, carefree. There's an element of fame recognition. Goes with this energy as well. Scarlett O'Hara is in the Five of Wands. Wars around you, you s your survival abilities are put to the test. Stay self-centered and determined. So again, it's an energy of conflict that goes with the Five of Wands energy, right? It, it's conflict, it's conflict surrounding you. You have to be strategic, you have to um, stay focused to make your way through. Um, the Six of Wands is, well, Catesius, Catesius. Catesius, she says. Um, I think it, this is Odysseus, is it the name? So, this is all about travel, conquest, reaching new lands, conquering new lands, or making them, you know, claiming them. It's again an element of victory, and it's, it is the element of fame, recognition, and the travel aspect. The Seven of Wands, guys. Super cat. So this is obviously knowing when to stand your ground, knowing when to fight for what you want, being ready to fight for what you want, being confident, seeing your own uh, strength, defending what is important to you, right? Those are all elements of the Seven of Wands. Guys, look, the Eight of Wands is Harry Potter. I cannot. And so this is... I mean, you have the element of smart, witty, knowledgeable, um, speed, things happening very quickly. Learning, so you have the aspect of information, right? Information, messages that you learn from different sources, as you would in a school, right? That's just so awesome. Um, the Nine of Wands is, um, is it Mulder? Yeah. Um, is it Twilight Zone? I think it's Twilight Zone. 
I haven't had my coffee, guys. I'm sorry. <laughs> but again, I thought this was this was a smart choice because this is all about you know standing up for what you believe and defending what you believe, even though other people think you're nuts, right? You're like, no, I know what I I know what I saw. I know what I believe. Standing up for it, trying to convince others, not backing down when people tell you to, you know, leave it alone or stop talking crazy or whatever the case may be. The Ten of Wands. In the Ten of Wands, we have Sissy Cat. And I think, if I remember correctly, is it though? Yeah, it is. Um, I had to research this, and the closest thing I could find was Sissy, something with a J, I don't know, it's a Dickens character. Um, I think the story is called The Hard Times. Correct me if I'm wrong. If you know more about this, correct me if I'm wrong. Leave it in the comments below. But it does tie in, the, you know, the, the, the character, if this is what the character is. I wasn't able to find a, a picture or something to be similar to this. But um, it's someone who, it's a girl, it's a young girl who perseveres through hard times and hardship. And she not only does that, but she helps others. She makes sure that they have what they need or they help them, you know, move from one place to another or um, that kind of energy, which would make sense with the Ten of Wands. Carrying a lot of burdens on your shoulders, it's, it's bearing the brunt of things. But yeah, if you have more information on that, if you have been using this deck or you know more about the character and how it ties in with um, the energy of the cards, leave it in the comments below because I'm really interested. Okay. The Page of Wands is, oh, <laughs> cat in boots, puss in boots, right? And we know the energy of puss in boots, and we know the energy of the Page of Wands, so they, they, they go well, you know, it's fun, it's jovial, it's new, it's attractive, it offers opportunities, let's do this, let's do that, artistic, speaking of. The Knight of Wands is Freddie Mercury. And I thought, why did she choose Freddie Mercury as the Knight of Wands? Well, you have a lot of energy in this card. There's a lot of energy. And you have the artistic aspect, the attraction aspect, the travel aspect. But also what she says, such a voice, voice such an energy can be used either to transcend or to destroy yourself, you choose. So I thought that was very poignant right the queen of wands is wonder woman i want to open a can of worms but it's the original wonder woman which i prefer and i mean we know wonder woman and we we can see why she chose wonder woman for the queen of wands because you know you have the fame you have the beauty you have the attraction but also the I'm not afraid to go to work for to go to work for what I want and to go to war for what I want to protect, right? And King of Wands is Zeus, guys. I mean, seriously. Okay. Now, cups. The Ace of Cups is Venus. This is gorgeous. This is just gorgeous. The Two of Cups is Hardy and Laurel, which I found interesting. Actually, in the in the little booklet, um, I think I'm not sure unless I'm missing something. It might have been it was supposed to be a different thing because we have Catry Bradshaw as the Two of Cups. If you could see, establish your own fashion, your own style. I mean, it, we know um, who what's her name, Carrie. Bradshaw, right, is from Sex and the City and all that. But in the card, it's Laurel and Hardy. And I quite appreciate this uh, illustration because it focuses on the aspect of, you know, uh, soul bond, true friendship, compliment complimenting each other, you know, uh, working well together, a true team, a true pair. And yes, it has the romantic aspect to it. But remember, guys, the Two of Cups, whenever we see the Two of Cups, we get so excited talking about love and whatever. But it also represents a very, very deep bond, a very deep friendship. 
It can be with a romantic partner, it can be with a friend, it can be with a sibling, it can be with whatever. It's soulmate bonds are not just romantic. And I'm, I like that she chose this illustration. Right, the Three of Cups. I don't know these guys. I'm sorry. Tell me about it. Cats Brothers. Let the absurd reign for a while. Celebrate, let yourself be childish. Extravagance is required now. Go wild in words and deeds. Guys, let me know if you know who these brothers are. I mean, obviously, this is about, you know, partying, artistic events. Charlie's playing in the background. So if you hear stuff, I'm sorry. Um, and like the card says, letting loose. It's a celebration. But let me know if you have more information about this. The Four of Cups. We have Dorothy. And with the Four of Cups, it says, follow the roads bringing you over rainbows, but keep in mind that there is no place like true home. So how, how can we blend this together? It's, you know, seeing things offered to you, but you keep in the back of your mind, you're thinking, yeah, this is great, but it's not home, right? So that's how I can tie this to the energy of the Four of Cups, in my mind. The Five of Cups is the Count of Monte Cristo. And I think this is, a, again, a smart choice because it talks about switching a situation, taking it from something that was a, a, a deep loss and betrayal and turning it around and reinventing yourself because that's kind of what happened, right? The Six of Cups is Peter Pan, never grow up, right? The child energy, the story-like energy. The Seven of Cups is Don Quixote, fighting the windmills, right? The Eight of Cups is Arthur, and Arthur is getting ready to go on his quest, and he's taking Excalibur out of that stone. But then he has to do something with it, right? So it's the preparation for a quest. And I love how he's wearing the red cape that we usually see in the Eight of Cups. The Nine of Cups, guys, I had issues with this. This is Tintin. It's a Belgian cartoon. Um, and Tintin is very creative, very inventive. He solves all the mysteries, you know, he figures everything out. He solves all the puzzles. He's very well liked and very well loved. And it's like he's in his element. He's doing his thing. And he always, you know, has like the happy ending. He always makes sure things come together for him. So that's how I can tie it to the Nine of Cups energy. The Ten of Cups is Cinderella. So again, this is where we have it all. Obviously, this is when she is uh, transformed before she has to run back home and her carriage turns back into a punk pumpkin but again I found that interesting because yes this is the moment where you have it all but we all know that the, the energy of a 10 is transitory we're not supposed to stay there we're supposed to then start fresh and start something new so 10s are not forever right I see it as a transition period between completing something and then we have to start something else we can't just stick around and you know be complacent in that place so it's very, very interesting, guys. I'm telling you, this is very well thought out. All right, the Page of Cups is Little Thumb. And I vaguely remember this story. Um, I had to I had to Google it. Um, but obviously this is, this is about a, a child who's not that well liked, unfortunately. Um, one of seven children, the family uh, reaches a time of hardship. I believe the parents die, I think. And he steps up to help his brothers he, and sisters. He steps up um, and does what he needs to do and sweet talks his way into getting what he needs to get for his brothers and sisters. Because he steals the ogre's boots. Uh, he gets the ogre's wife to give him everything because he tells her that he's being held hostage or, or kind of kidnapped for ransom or if she doesn't give him everything the, the ogre is going to die something something like that it's not exactly fair game but he's using his words his intentions are good you know to look after his family 
but the way he goes about it, you know, is questionable. Um, and I guess that can be the case for the Page of Cups, because he says all the right things, but he kind of never delivers, right? The Knight of Cups is Zoro. I mean, you know, this is the, the passion, the attraction, the romance, the sweet talk. The Queen of Cups is Mary Poppins. And this is about, you know, bringing some magic into what you're doing, blending things together. Um, obviously, you know, you have the, the love and caring aspect there. Uh, the King of Cups is... Gene Kelly, is it? Dancing in the Rain? I think it is. So, it, you bring the energy of that movie and that character into this card and it just makes sense, right? Okay, so that's the Cups. Swords. <laughs> this is so, I mean... This is Han Solo, as I am given to understand. I mean, from, even I know Han Solo. Can you, don't, oh, for God's sake, I don't. It's Luke Skywalker, guys. Oh my God, I was going to say, I don't, I don't, don't crucify me, but I haven't seen, I literally have not seen, like from start to finish, all the movies. I, I haven't seen Star Wars. I know the story. I think everyone does, but I haven't actually sat down and watch the whole movies, the entire movie. So that's why I said what I said, but it's Luke Skywalker. Uh, guys. So, you know, you have the new beginning aspect to this. You have the quest for victory, fighting for justice aspect to the Ace of Swords. The Two of Swords I found, again, very interesting. The Two of Swords is um, Antigone or Antigone, I don't know how you pronounce it. Um, and it says, Dilemma. Either you choose the comfortable path but deny your own con conscience, or you follow your deepest beliefs, but hard times may be ahead. So I had to Google this. So apparently, um, she lost both her brothers um, in a war. And the ruler at the time issued a law preventing people from mourning one of them or both of them. I can't remember exactly. Um, but she still wanted to give both of them a proper burial and to mourn them properly because they were her brothers. And the ruler caught her and instead of yielding, admitting what she did was against the law technically, um, she did not back down, she was not apologetic, um, she just kind of closed off, nope didn't do anything wrong, blah, 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 etc. And as a result, she was taken to um, prison and unfortunately took her own life. Um, so there's that energy of what do you do? Where, where, I mean, no matter what you choose, something's got to give. No matter what you choose, you have to turn your back on something else. And it's the place where we are in or at in the Two of Swords energy because we're, that's why we're stuck and that's why we are afraid to make a choice, right? Because the Two of Swords is ultimately a stalemate energy. So I found that interesting. The Three of Cups is the Little Mermaid. The Three of Cups, the Three of Swords, sorry, pardon me, is the Little Mermaid. And it's all about, you know, I mean, we know that I, even I know the Little Mermaid. <laughs> um, and it's about sacrifice. What did you sacrifice him for? And is your sacrifice worth I mean is what you're sacrificing worthy of your sacrifice does that make sense what you're sacrificing for or who you're sacrificing for are they worthy of your sacrifice because more often than not we just get left heartbroken and you have the aspect of longing and you have the aspect of um self-sacrifice in the three of swords the four of swords yeah is uh the lion from narnia She says, you know the right balance between power and self-sacrifice. Your wisdom and goodness will win over this. Trust that you are strongly protected. Okay, guys, don't. <laughs> I haven't watched Narn yet. Don't freak out. I don't like to watch movies with animals in them because I know those animals are going to get hurt at some point and I just can't handle it. I'm going to be completely honest. That's why I don't watch movies with animals in them. Even if they're animated, I still, I take it seriously, I can't. 
Okay, I just cannot. So, I there's a lot of movies I haven't watched because of that. Um, but yeah. So this is that time of pause, of reflection, um, of taking a step back to think things through before we actually take action. I love the Five of Swords, Don Corleone. Yeah, Don Cat Leone. <laughs> so obviously, you know, this is about, I mean, he's making all them uh, offers you can't refuse, right? So in a way, he forces your hand or tries to push you in one direction or another, which can be an energy of the Five of, of Swords and not taking no for an answer, that kind of thing. The Six of Swords is Christopher Columbus. So again, that uh, aspect of travel, new lands, maybe better lands, or better places than way, where you left, right? Oh, that's so cute. The Seven of Swords is the Mad Hatter. And again, it's a smart choice because it's all about what you believe and what you portray so that others believe, right? So good. The Eight of Swords is Esmeralda. And I think, you know, she's focused on the fact that she wasn't really trapped with Quasimodo. Yes, she was there's the perception of being in prison but she wasn't really trapped because he loved her so much and he always looked after her and made sure she had everything she needed the nine of swords guys is vincent van gogh and i suppose you know we can see like your inner demons in your you know taking over your mind such a creative mind but it can be it can be creative or destructive as we know from his story the Ten of Swords is uh, King Kong. And this is all about, you know, be careful who you allow to have power over you because you don't know what they're going to do with that power. They're going to overpower you um, and maybe sacrifice you or hurt you. She says, let no one take you away from your protected island. Be careful with who you let yourself be tamed by so again it's be careful who you trust and who you give your power to because you don't know what they're going to do with it the page of swords is james bond guys and i mean we know why this is that intelligent cunning spy aspect resourceful good with his words which is the page of swords energy the knight of swords is hercules so this is, you know, you have your goal set. You're go you have to go through those all those labors. He's, he's doing it. He's not backing down. He's not taking no for an answer. It's brute strength at times. The Queen of Swords is Cleopatra, which is fitting. She's gorgeous. She's been through a lot. She's experienced a lot of loss and betrayal. She's still willing to give you a chance, but she will not hesitate to defend herself if she has to. And look, I love this. The King of Swords is Sherlock Holmes. Very fitting, isn't it? And those are the swords. And the pentacles. The Ace of Pentacles is... Um, oh, who's this artist? Oh, for God's sake, guys. He's on the tip of my tongue. Picasso, for the love of God. Pablo Picasso. And it's it's all about, you know, you can create a masterpiece. You're at the beginning, right? And you have all the tools you need. It's within you to turn this this these materials that are in front of you, right? These circumstances that are in front of you, to turn them into something that you can build upon, that you can develop, and that in the end can be very lucrative or very profitable. The two of pentacles is Fred Astaire. I, oh, this is so good. But it's all about, you know, the dancing aspect. I'd be quick on your feet, adapt, bring a little bit, you know, of, of lightheartedness into what you're doing. The Three of Pentacles is Mozart. So talking about, you know, genius, creativity. 
being admired by others, your work, setting the tone. No, no pun intended. The four of pentacles is Madonna, blonde ambition. And she chose Madonna to say, to portray, you know, don't take no for an answer. You power through, you hold your position and you power through until you get where you want to get to. Stubborn, right? Stubborn energy, don't back down. Because it wasn't, it wasn't easy for Madonna to break through in those times, right? She was a trailblazer. Whether you like Madonna or not, you have to give her props. She's a true artist. She was a woman. She was all about sexuality, all about, you know, being who you are, releasing yourself, enjoying yourself. And unfortunately, in those times, that was not that easy. Right. So credit where credit is due. The Five of Pentacles. Again, I have, to, I have to look this up. I remember seeing this painting, but I never actually looked into it. And this is Phaedra. So it represents uh, uh, unrequited love. It focuses on unrequited love or wanting something and then the other person doesn't want you or wanting something that you can't have. And just that feeling of, of loneliness, of feeling left out, of feeling abandoned, of feeling unloved, unwanted, like it's never going to come together, which is very fitting for the Five of Pentacles energy. Because basically, she fell in love with someone who didn't, didn't love her. The Six of Pentacles is um, the giant, oh, for God's sake, and Lilliput, what's his, honestly... Gulliver, oh, pardon me. Um, traveling time. The moment is right. Go discover new lands, new people, new cultures. So with the Six of Pentacles, so you have the numbers at the top, in case you haven't noticed by now, and the symbol of the suit at the bottom, and the major arcana are all Roman numerals as well, as you would typically see. So with the Six of Pentacles, the, the, there is the element of, of travel that goes with the number six. Um, of new places so again it goes with like adapting knowing when to give knowing when to take and it's learning how to work together what do I have that I can give you and what do you have that you can give me so that we're both happy right the seven of pentacles is Steve McQueen so the seven of pentacles she chose this representation of the seven of pentacles focusing on the timing uh or the speed of things rather right because stephen queen is the king of speed um he had a proclivity for speed um and the seven of pentacles usually talks about you know things being so slow um or taking too long to figure something out so that it maybe you know it costs you an opportunity really you have to take your time to uh figure things out and the energy here is put some speed into it, move it along. So in other words, if you're waiting for something that just does, is not coming together, you take action. If, you, if that means walking away from that, walk away from it, but un, get, get yourself unstuck, right? So I find that interesting as well. The Eight of Pentacles is um, a famous ballet artist, Nuriyev. You have to train your body as well as your mind. Self-discipline and persistence is, are your answers. So that's the Eight of Pentacles. You know, practice makes perfect. And that is so true when it comes, especially when it comes to ballet. Because ballet is gorgeous. It's beautiful. But it's grueling. It is grueling. You put your body to through so much to make sure a, a move is perfect. And that is the energy of the Eight of Pentacles. The Nine of Pentacles is uh, Sherizad. So, you know, you can see the aspect of use your wisdom, use your words, use your experience to make sure that you get what you want and you have what you need. And all your needs are met, and they're met by yourself because you're using your words, your knowledge, your experience, your ability to adapt and think fast, you know, and make up a story to save your life, right? It's all you. So 
So everything you have, you have because of you. So it's the self-made man or woman energy that we see in the Nine of Pentacles. The Ten of Pentacles is Walt Disney. And at first I was like, well, how does that... But she's focusing on the legacy aspect of the Ten of Pentacles, of taking something, building it from scratch and developing, and then you pass it on, right? You have taken care of your family, you have taken care of everyone that you want to take care of. And this is a legacy that you will have forever. And that is an element of the Ten of Pentacles. The Page of Pentacles is Frodo. So you have that shy energy and, you know, the guidance is to trust yourself. You have what it takes. Take this opportunity. The Knight of Pentacles is, oh God, what's his name? Catarix. <laughs> it's Asterix, isn't it? Asterix and Obelix. Um... And this says, you know, don't take no for an answer. You keep walking your walk. You keep doing what you're doing. Stick to the plan. Don't back down. What else does she say? Resist. Refuse to be invaded. Find the magic potion that can make you invincible. The queen of pentacles is Barbara Streisand. It's so good. And she says, excellence in one field may be not enough for you. You have much more skills that you can use to experiment total achievement. So this is all about, you know, skill um, and keeping things into perspective and thinking long term. And then the King of Pentacles is the Wizard of Oz. You know, he has all the answers. He has he has it within his ability to give people what they need, right? So if we think about it that way, that's the King of Pentacles. The wisdom, the resource, the ability. He's worked hard to get there. He's worked hard to create his world around him. He is an authority, right? Okay, guys. So, this is like, if you take the time to watch this video, if you're still with me, Thank you, I appreciate it. And trust me, it's worth it, it's worth it. But if you're still here, you know that it's, well, it's worth it. Um, so this is the deck. It's absolutely gorgeous, it's amazing, it's lovely to look at, lovely to work with. The choice of heroes to portray each card is very, very smart and very well thought out. You, ha you can clearly see that she has the wisdom and she has the knowledge of what each card represents to a deep enough extent so that she can match them with different characters that will make the, the, the representation and the meanings of that card clear and pop, right, to the reader. So I hope you have enjoyed this and I hope you find it useful. Like I say, I have not fi found uh, like a thorough walkthrough through the deck. You know, people just show the cards and it's like, oh, they're cute, but it goes so much deeper and I really wanted to take the time Thanks, George, for getting me this deck. Um, it was a, a surprise. I had no idea it was going to uh, get me what he got me. All the decks. Uh, it was like a set with all cat things. Um, and they're all gorgeous. They're all beautiful. They're all well thought out, re well represented. And I don't feel like, oh my god, I can't do a reading with those cards because I can't take it seriously. I, have, I don't feel that way about any of these decks. Some of them I knew about. Some of them I had no idea but they're, go they're just gorgeous, right? So I'll be taking some time to do a walkthrough with all of them. This one is very, very complex, I found. Um, maybe the, the other ones are maybe easier to go through because the symbols are more um, closer to the traditional meanings, so it's you don't have the added layers, you know, of characters and their stories and all that. So I would thoroughly recommend this deck to anyone thinking about using it getting it it's not just a cute deck guys it is so much more um so thanks for watching i'm really interested in your thoughts let me know okay if you found this useful let me know if you have your own take as to why the author chose particular um heroes to represent a particular card let me know if you have more information on the cards that i wasn't so sure about right 
I, I tried, I did my best, okay? Um, and just let me know your experience with the deck, if, if you're using it, if, if you enjoy it, what, what's going on. Thank you so, so much. I'll leave it here. Um, I look forward to working with this deck. It's absolutely gorgeous. I've said that not enough times, trust me. Um, and I'll see you in the next video. All right. Bye for now.